good morning to all of you am i loud and clear yes so good morning to all of you as i had messaged yesterday we will continue with our reflection on the life of david and today we will try to finish this whole episode in 1 samuel chapter 16 where david fights goliath and uh, we are going to focus on uh, let me just do a little review what we are going to uh, what we had started focusing on so just a little review of the last session uh, we started this session with the three c words first of all the challenge to the living god that's what the first thing we looked at and in that challenge we looked at four s words the scene of the challenge in verses 1 to 3, where the battle was actually happening. Then we looked at the size of the challenge, where Goliath is mentioned, and we reflected on how Goliath was like a fighting machine. He was, uh, in the past, Joshua, when he was conquering the land of Canaan, he had left three cities where the giants were. He had not attacked those three cities and the giants continued to remain in those cities and now the people of Israel are facing the problem from one of those giants. So we looked at the size of the giant, we looked at the armor, that the size that uh, Goliath had, the armor that Goliath had it was like a fighting machine. Then we looked at what I called the shout of the giant, how he kept on challenging and his shout had some kind of a uh, what he was telling the people of Israel rather than be fighting and all a lot of soldiers dying in the uh, in the battle it is better one person comes forward two people come forward from each side and they fight and the casualty is less so there was something what I can say uh, I will not say wisdom but there was something of benefit in that in that shout and then we looked at the fourth S word, the seriousness of the challenge. It went on for 40 days. Okay, in verse 16, it went on for 40 days. And then in verse 11, we looked at how it affected Saul and his army. That how Saul was discouraged and how he was afraid. So how Saul was discouraged and how Saul was afraid. It created the Goliath created fear and discouragement in the heart of God's people. <clears throat> That's what Goliath stands for, those huge problems that can create fear and discouragement in the heart of God's people. We also looked at feeling discouraged and feeling afraid is not a sign that we are cowards. Okay, a coward is a not one. Uh, we often think courageous people don't feel fear. They don't, they are not discouraged. That is not true. We will we looked at how courageous people feel. Okay, courageous people feel that. Okay, only they don't allow their fear and discouragement to stop them from facing the problem, to stop them from fighting the problem. So you and I can be courageous in spite of our problem okay we can be courageous in spite of our problems if we learn to fight our problems and so that is something very important for us to look at because oftentimes we think if i am courageous i will not be afraid okay i won't have any fear or any discouragement so cowards are those people courageous people are those people who feel fear who feel discouraged, okay, who are feeling low when they are going through problems, but these are the people who face it, who face it, who go through it, and who conquer their problem. So I hope so this idea of courage, because we're going to look at the, when we come to the third C, this is going to be a very important quality in David's life, the virtue of fortitude. We we'll look at the end, four things. Yes, God helped David. No wonder God helped David. But there were four things that David had allowed God to develop within himself that right now in this battle, all those four uh, virtues that David had are now coming to his help. 
I often tell people one of our biggest problem is our nature. Okay, our nature can be our biggest friend or our nature can be our biggest enemy. And some of us we give up so easily because we have cultivated that nature. We hardly fight. We hardly put up a fight. The moment a problem starts, we give up. Yes, as I said, everyone will feel fear. Everyone will feel discouraged. Everyone will feel low. But a courageous person stands up in spite of these feelings. A courageous person fights, goes through the battle in spite of this feeling. I hope so. Today we we get into that category where the Lord can say to us, "Yes, we are people who are very courageous, who don't stop, who don't stop in spite of the discouragement and fear that the problem is creating within us." So let's get this idea out of our mind. Courageous people don't feel any negative emotions. No, that's the only difference between a coward, someone who is a coward, and someone who is very courageous. Then we looked at. the champion of the living god the second c the champion of the living god from verse 7 to uh, uh, from verse 12 to verse 40 in chapter 17 and we looked at what kind of a heart a champion has okay what kind of a quality what kind of a heart a champion has and we looked at the first quality last time we as i said we are going to look at certain c words certain c qualities starting with the word c that makes a champion you know if you watch movies we often find champions are those one who are hitting 10 people when he fights 10 people are flying in the air with one of his hits that is not a in reality such things don't exist according to god the first quality a champion has we that sort we saw in david's life they are consistent with their routine they are consistent with their routine from verses 12 to 15 how david was taking care of his father's sheep david had two what i can say two responsibilities at that time when goliath came one responsibility was the family responsibility of taking care of his father's sheep and the second responsibility he had got a new job where he was called to play on the instrument to king saul whenever saul was tormented by an evil spirit and how david was balancing both this responsibilities he was very good at his daily family and work responsibilities taking care of the father's sheep and also uh doing his job well his he was doing his job so well that Saul will feel relieved after David will play the instrument that means he was really doing his job well his master his boss was getting benefited from the kind of service David gave so that's why david was very good at his family responsibilities he was also very good at his work responsibilities we also looked at now <coughs> uh this is something that i was reading again and it came to my notice i remember many years ago when i was teaching what makes a great man of god that when a great man of god does great things great things have small beginnings great things have small beginnings david became a king the king of israel but do you know where did it all start where did it all start the road to becoming one of the greatest king of israel the road to greatness for david started we find in verse 20 that he was told by his father his father told him to take the tiffin box that means to i am putting it in my word take the tiffin box to his brothers in bombay language they call it a dabba wala you know carrying we have people here who carry the tiffin box from one place to the place where people are working and deliver it there <clears throat> the road to greatness just imagine david would have at this time said because remember he was anointed by samuel and you will have told his father you know what kind of a job you are giving me don't you know i am the future king of israel that i have been anointed as the future king of israel and you are calling me to do such a low profile job take the tiffin box from home to my brothers the anointing 
you know, the anointing that David received from Samuel did not stop him from doing his routine work. In fact, it made him more better in the routine work. And I believe that's what, when the Lord touches us, it should happen in our life. We become, become a better father. We become a better son, a better mother, a better son. Okay? We become a better worker. Sadly, sometimes, you know, we start falling in love with doing the spiritual things so much that our work starts suffering, our family responsibility starts suffering after the Lord has touched us. We feel we are not called for all this. David saw that after being anointed from Samuel, by Samuel, he did not, he, it did not affect his routine. In fact, he goes back to his routine and now he's doing his routine very well. So the road to greatness actually started for David when he took this tiffin box. This was the tiffin box. Just imagine he would have refused to do this work. Then he wouldn't have fought Goliath. Okay, then he wouldn't have got an entry into Saul's army. And then we know the whole story. This was the road that led him to greatness. The beginning, the beginning of David becoming the king started with this tiffin box. This reminds me of the parable of the mustard seed, the smallest of all seed Jesus spoke. But when it grows, it grows in one of the largest shrubs. People who have great endings in their life, remember, they have small beginnings. And one of the small beginnings they do is they, they love the routine. And so I want you to keep in mind, sometimes the road to greatness starts with things, small things, like the tiffin box. And I would just imagine if David would have, would have refused to take the tiffin box uh, I have a doubt whether he should have whether he could have become a king. Here he says yes to his father, who sends him to his brothers. And so, in the same way, we find, you know, Jesus, who said yes to his fathers and came down to his brothers. So David is right now doing that when he's listening to his fathers and going to meet his brothers. So people who are champion, champion people, people who are a champions for God. They live out their routine, day-to-day -day life, that involve things like family responsibilities, work responsibilities, uh, doing small things like taking the tiffin boxes. They do it well. Okay? They do it well. As we saw in Acts chapter 13, where God speaking about David says, I, will ra I raised up David, a man after my own heart, who will fulfill all my will, all, all my will, which means my will in the family life, my will in the work life, my will in daily life, all. This is something very important for us to know. We have to fulfill all the will of God and all the will of God, most of the will of God will include the routine, routine things in life. Get up in the morning, do the same things, okay, go to the same place, do the same work serve the same people, routine. Now we go to the second C word. <clears throat> okay, David was not only consistent in his routine, he was challenged. That's the second word, C word I want to use. He was, uh, uh, he as a champion of God, David was challenged by impossible things. He was challenged by impossible things. He faced the challenge of impossible things. Let's read verse 26, where we find how David was challenged with the impossible things. In verse 26, it says, And David said to the men who stood by him, which means now David has come to the battlefield, bringing the tiffin box to his brothers. And now he's hearing Goliath. At that time, only Goliath comes. And he's challenging the army of Israel. And so in verse 26, David, it says, said to the men who stood by him, what shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine and takes away, look at what he's saying, and takes away the reproach from Israel. Like this problem is like a reproach to Israel. 
for who is this uncircumcised Philistine? When he's saying uncircumcised Philistine, he says this, we are a covenant people of God. Remember, circumcision was a sign of covenant relationship with God. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered to him in the same way, so shall it be alone to the man who kills him. So now here we find where well, David is like, he's accepting the challenge. All the people are running away from this challenge. Remember in this battlefield, what is happening? All of them, all of them. It's like, you know, you are standing all alone now. It's very easy. It's very easy to fight when everyone is involved. It's very difficult to stand and take a stand and fight when everyone is already started giving up. David is standing among the vast army of Israel who has given up. Who are giving up. And he's the one who accepts the challenge that this uh, that Goliath is throwing. Then in verse 23, when Verse 23, we find, verse, so verse 26, we find David is accepting the challenge. But in verse 23, we find David is hearing Goliath. He hears the Goliath. And hearing Goliath, he just in, starts inquiring about him. All are running away from him. But David starts inquiring about him. Means he's accepting the challenge. Okay. He starts asking questions. Who this giant is? Why is he, you know, how dare he challenges the people of Israel? We find the people of Israel, Saul was afraid. Look at the response. You know, Saul was also, Saul, the people of Israel, the army of Israel, and David had the same problem, the same challenge. Saul also had Goliath. The armies of Israel also had Goliath. David also had Goliath. What made the difference? How they were responding to this challenge. The response made the difference. The response made the difference. Which means all of us had the same, all of them, Israel, Saul, and David had the same question paper. Now they are entering and they are sitting for an exam. And in this exam, the question paper is same, called Goliath. David gets flying colors. How? The answer zero, the response he gave. You know, our children who sit for exam, have you ever wondered, all the children in the same class have the same question paper, but the reality is not all get the same marks. Not all got the same marks, same questions, but the marks are not same. Why? Depends upon what answers are written. And so challenge is not the real problem. Uh, how you are dealing with that challenge. And David, then we find David is told, let me give you the verse. In verse 25, <clears throat> it says, And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man? They are talking about uh, Goliath, who has come up. Surely he has come up to defy Israel. And the man who kills him, the man who kills him, the, look at the three benefits Saul had said. Saul is not fighting the problem. Huh? Saul now, tries to find someone who can fight Goliath. And he gives them, Saul decides, promises three benefits for anyone who will fight Goliath and kill him. What were the three benefits? He says the king will enrich him with great riches. A big reward. Great riches, not riches. Great riches. Will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel, which means no taxes. David accepts the challenge and he decides to volunteer. So a champion of God, people who are champion of God, oftentimes, we oftentimes think, you know, people who are close to God will not face any challenges. No. Remember, David was a man after God's own heart and now he faces one of the biggest challenges of his life. Saul, Israel and David had the same challenge all three responded differently. Saul and the armies of Israel ran away from the challenge, ran away, decided not to face. Saul decided to reward, give three rewards to anyone who conquers Goliath. 
David decides to face the challenge. Sometimes as people of God, we will not only have challenge, but we will have challenging times. What do I mean by challenging times? There is a challenge that is going on for quite a long time. Quite a long time. Okay, this Goliath is taking a little longer time to get conquered. It's how. And it's sometimes very easy that as the battle gets a little longer, it's very easy for us to give in to discouragement and fear which we are already feeling in. It's very easy to feel that God is not interested in giving us victory. People who are champions will face the challenge. Okay? They allow themselves to be challenged and they accept the challenge. So that was what David did. Let's go to the third C. <clears throat> so David was consistent in his routine. He was challenged by the impossible things. Third C. He was committed. David was committed in spite of ridicule. Not only David had challenges, but David was ridiculed. Ridiculed means he was criticized badly. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Let's look at the criticism David faced. The ridicule David faced. And that's what we will find. You know, champions, people who are champions for God, they are often ridiculed. They often face not only the challenge, they often face another problem called criticism. Criticism from whom? Who don't want to face, who don't want to fight, who don't want to do anything to solve the problem. And he faced, David is facing criticism from people who are running away from the problem. And here is a guy named David trying to face the problem <coughs> and trying to conquer it instead of encouraging him. They are ridiculing him. Let's look at the ridicule David faced. First, David faced the ridicule from his own brother who was in the army, Eliab. Remember, Eliab was disqualified. When Samuel came to anoint, he first got drawn by Eliab, David's brother. And he thought, oh, this is the one whom God has chosen. But immediately... Sam, God tells Samuel, you know, you look at the face, I look at the heart. Don't get carried away by Eliab, for I have rejected him. So Eliab was disqualified by God, but now here we find he's the first one to ridicule David. Let's look at verse 28. <coughs> what Eliab says, Verse 28, those of us who have our Bible, <coughs> it says now Eliab, his eldest brother, heard, means he heard David talking to the men. And Eliab, Eliab's anger was kindled against David. He gets very angry at David. And he said, why have you come down? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? Look at the ridicule. You know, says, what work you have got here? Actually, he has come to give the tiffin box. Instead of being grateful, you know, who told you to come here? And second, you are neglecting your responsibilities. He never even asked David to clarify, by the way, where are the sheep? So David could answer, I have kept it with a keeper. They are safe. Eli was already assuming that David is a very irresponsible guy. When actually David is the most responsible among all of them. He is taking care of all his family responsibilities and is now facing, fighting the challenges also. Have you seen a guy or anyone in your life, they are too good in being responsible. You know, they are uh, at, this, at one time they are doing well in their responsibilities with the family, with their work and with the assignments that they have. And at the same time, they are fighting challenges. Same time. I know when we have challenges, our work suffers. Family work also suffers. We don't, we don't like that. And Eliab is now talking to David as if, you know, he's a very irresponsible guy. With whom you have left those few sheep. Look at the word few sheep. 
David was taking care of good number of sheep. He says, your job is very small. You are not good in doing even the little work very well. Then he say, goes on to say, I know your presumption and the evil of your heart. For you have come down to see the battle. He says, you fellow, you want to you know, neglect your duties and you want to enjoy this battle scene. You have come to see. The reason you have come here, you want to see. Then we have David replying to him. David tells him, what have I done now? Okay, so David is now then replies to him. But look at the, the point that I want to draw to you is David faced not only the challenges, he was committed in spite of the ridicule. Eliab ridicules him. His family is, you know, calling him irresponsible. He's putting him down. <clears throat> so David had now had to make a very important choice. You see, this is what happens. Uh, and I want to bring a very important principle here. David makes a very important choice here. Okay. The choice is, does he start now fighting with those who are criticizing him? Or does he keep his eyes fixed on the problem that he needs to solve? Goliath. Very important choice. Huh? I repeat again. Does David, he had a choice to do now. Very important choice. When you are criticized, you have this choice. Do you continue to focus on the work that you have to complete? The ministry you have to complete? The job you have to finish? Or do you turn aside to start fighting with the critic? David realizes fighting with the critic is useless job. Because you can't convince those who are criticizing you. You can't convince them. David decides, a very important decision, to keep on focusing on the goal, Goliath, conquering Goliath. Now, this is a very important quality David had. It's a quality. How many of us, when we are facing a challenge, and while facing a challenge, we get criticized, we have the character, the nature to keep aside the criticism. Yes, cr criticism can hurt us. It can make us feel bad. It can hurt us deeply when our motives are criticized. Okay? When we are labeled like David as irresponsible people who can't do anything in life. It's very easy to give in to that criticism and forget the challenge. I know sometimes, you know, I've done this with myself. My family knows it. Where sometimes we become, I become aware. I always have one, two people in my life who yet say things to put me down. And often times when yeah. I'm discussing with my family, because I know they are also affected. My family doesn't like when anyone says anything about me. And it is I who sit and tell them I have no time to answer them. Because if I get into what they are saying, my focus from ministry will go off. I won't be able to focus on studying the word of God. All the time, what these people are saying will be in my mind. All the time, I will start saying in my mind, why they say like that? Why they talk like that? Why they treat like that? Don't they know that I am being committed to God instead of supporting me? Okay, don't support me, but don't at least criticize me. I learned from David that this happens. It is very normal to happen. And sometimes it can come from your own family members. And it can really wound your spirit, hurt you deeply, and you feel like giving up. That's the time you need to know champions keep their eyes on the goal in spite of the criticism. I know my goal is to be a good minister of the word of God. My goal is to see that I prepare good sessions and to prepare good sessions, your mind has to be free. God can't speak to you if your mind is just disturbed. In fact, then he has to minister to you. And one of the responsibilities I take for myself, it's called self-leadership responsibility, that I don't permit my mind. Yes, I feel bad. I feel pain. I feel hurt but I don't allow my mind to get disturbed by the critics.
in fact i don't give time for that unless and until it's something very big most of the time i just say i have no time to answer all this i want to focus on the work i learned this from david then we find not only david was criticized by his brother eliab he was also criticized by saul king saul who was supposed to fight actually king saul was supposed it was his responsibility to take up the challenge it was king saul's responsibility to fight goliath now he's not not fighting and the one who's volunteering to fight instead of encouraging him king saul also starts so not only look at the two people eliab stands for family king saul stands for his boss remember he was working for king saul at workplace so here we find david is facing criticism from people <clears throat> in his family life and is facing criticism from people with whom he is working two two places where most of our problems daily problems happen and here we find saul is verse 33 let's read verse 33 those of us who have a bible let's go to verse 33 and saul said to david you are not able to go against the philistine to fight with him first of all for saul right saul is not saying he actually saul should have said hello i am not able to go against this philistine he should have said that the one who is willing to go saul himself is telling him you are not able you won't be able to do this come on david be practical you know you won't be able to do is why for you are but a youth hey, you are just a small kid he realized he was a small kid with strong virtues saul was a grown up saul thought he was grown up saul was not grown up in fact david is acting like a grown up here saul is acting saul represents all those people who have grown old without growing up they have not grown up because grown up people face challenges so here saul represents all those who grow old they keep growing old every year but they don't grow up so instead of encouraging david saul first tells david you know i don't think so uh, it's your cup of tea david you can't fight goliath you are just a youth okay you are just a youth and he has been that is goliath has been a man of war from his youth this guy is an experienced fighter so here we find saul <clears throat> what saul is telling david david you are no match you are don't match you can't do it david you are no match for goliath but what happened david we find let's look at how david responded to the criticism David now could have stopped fighting, thinking of fighting Goliath. And you know, when someone criticizes us, our eyes go off the goal, and we start fighting with the critic. David is neither fighting with Eliab; he's answering them and leaving. He's not arguing with them. He tells, he gives them a reply and leaves it. And David keeps his eyes on the goal. David refuses to fight Eliab and Saul because he knows. Though these people are his critics, they are not the real enemy. If he gives time to his critics, all his energy, all his time, which he requires to fight Goliath, will be lost. <coughs> That's how wise champions are. They know which battles to avoid and which battles to fight. And I believe that smack of a champion. so many battles happen every day isn't it in our life challenges and critics a champion continues to focus on the challenge ignores the critic ignores i have no time to fight you fight you i, I i'm not going to allow your words to remember words have power and here david's boss is telling him i i he forgot Saul forgot that when David played the instrument, the evil spirit ran away. How powerful David was! He forgot, and he's telling David, "You are no match for him." And so that's what we have to learn. You know, sometimes we are facing challenges, and some of you are facing challenges right now in your life, like Goliath. And along with the challenge, criticism is also coming. 
and that is really getting in you i want you to encourage brothers and sisters keep your eyes on the goal there are people who do, will not do anything to solve the problem and to solve your problem also they won't give you any help but of course they will see that they can how they can put you down support they don't give we have no problem but in spite of the support they will give us criticism so david we find he was committed committed to his goal of conquering goliath in spite of the criticism so what till now we have seen three qualities of a champion let me do a review david was consistent in his routine first second david was challenged by the impossible things he had challenges of things that were impossible goliath and david was committed in spite of his in spite of the ridicule two people ridiculed him El eliam who stands for family and saul who stands for workplace <clears throat> and david was committed to the goal may we learn this from david may we become champions for the lord the fourth quality that david had okay he was courageous in the lord he was courageous in the lord let's read verse 37 chapter 17 verses 34 to 37 Now remember, Saul has criticized David, and how David replies to Saul. His reply was a mark that showed David had the quality of courage. David replies to Saul, and in his reply, he says, "But David said to Saul, 'Your servant is to keep sheep for his father.' And when there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb from the flock, I went after him. Look at David. I went after him. Okay." and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth means he is rescuing the lamb and if he arose against me means if the lion came back to fight or the bear came back to fight i caught him by his beard and smote him and killed him your servant has killed both lions and bears and this uncircumcised philistine shall be like one of them seeing he has defied the armies of the living god so is is david bragging here no he's not bragging here he just telling saul how god has helped him in the past to conquer the daily challenges he has faced in his life david was a one who could conquer goliath because in his daily life before fighting goliath he he conquered the challenge that he faced in his work responsibilities the challenges that he faced in his work responsibility was lion and the bear protecting the sheep and david handled those challenges well so david's reply to the law he's not bragging about it he's not saying i can do it or i did it he's just telling saul how god helped him because see look at verse 37 and david said the lord who delivered me david is not saying i did it he is saying in verse 37 the lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of the philistine so david's courage actually is coming from the faithfulness of god he says i have seen god's faithfulness in my past life how god has stood by me and how god god has given me victory in my daily challenges now this also brings us to a very important principle do you remember your past victories so how the lord has seen you through because we have one problem uh, the problem of forgetting forgetting what god has done for us in the past so many prayers in the past god has answered so many blessings god has poured but we we forget and as a result because we forget next time when the problem comes we act as if god is again against us champions people who are champions for god they have a litany they have a litany you know we say the litany of our lady so this so people who are champions for god have a litany 
of God's faithfulness in their life. How God has been faithful to them in their past life. And so David was courageous. <clears throat> His past victories made him face the current problem, Goliath, that he's coming. Then in verse 45, we find David was David is once again showing his courage. He tells Goliath, I come to you. David doesn't say, I've come to fight you. He says, I come to you in the name of the Lord. I come to you, Goliath. Fight you, Goliath, in the name of the Lord. David was courageous in the Lord. Champions are people. They feel fear. They feel discouragement. But they are courageous. They don't give in to that. Fear and discouragement. They, they, they become courageous in the Lord. The fifth point, the fifth C and the last C of a champion for God. David was confident in the spirit, not in the flesh. Okay? David was confident in the spirit, not in the flesh. What do I mean by that? Confident. After David speaks to Saul, Saul agrees that he will send David to fight. And so we have in verse 38, let's read verse 38. Then Saul clothe David with his armor. He put a helmet of bronze on his head and clothed him with a coat of mop. Now Saul is giving his armor to David. And Saul says, you fight Goliath with my armor. And David girded his sword over his armor and he tried in vain to go for he was not used to them. And then David said to Saul, now Saul is saying, uh, telling David, you take all my armor, my sword and my clothes and you wear this and fight. David goes on to tell Saul. Then David said to Saul, I cannot go with this for I am not used to them. And David put them off. Then he took his staff in his hand and he chose five smooth stones from the brook and put them in his shepherd's bag or wallet his sling was in his hand and he drew near the Philistine. So David is refusing the armor. His confidence is not in what Saul is providing. His confidence is... Now, please listen to this. David decides to use the skill that he was very good at. Sling. This was something that God had developed in David's life. Okay? God had developed in David's life. The sling practice. God knows how many times David must have practiced the skill. You know the sling. And now that is going to come. The skill that God had developed in David's life. Now David is depending upon that. So David was confident in what, how he could approach the problem. How he could solve the problem. Not as Saul wanted him to solve the problem. So David was confident in the spirit, not in the flesh. That Those are the qualities. That's the heart of a champion. Let's do a little review. What does a champion look like? <clears throat> David was consistent in the routine things. He was challenged. Second, he was challenged by the impossible things. Goliath. He was committed in spite of his ridicule. Where the ridicule came from? Eliab, family. From Saul, workplace. He was courageous in the Lord. He's not bragging, I can't do it. He says, I've seen how God, God's faithfulness, how God has helped me in the past. And if God has helped me in the past, he will help me right now also. And fifth, David was confident in the spirit, not in the flesh. He is refusing the armor Saul is giving him and he's choosing the skill that God had developed in him. So what David is saying to Saul is, I'm not going in the outward man, which means all this armor, outward things. I'm going with the inward man. To fight Goliath, the inner man is important. Now let's end up with the third C. So we have, till now we have looked at the challenge to the living God. We looked at the champion of the living God. And let's look at the third C from verse 40. The conquest of a living God. The conquest. I want to look at to conquer Goliath. 
there were four things, four call four things that David used not only to fight Goliath, but to conquer Goliath. Four things. And as we conclude, we look at these four things. Now we know the whole part of the story. David, here there is another important uh, uh, say lesson that I want to draw out. Verse 41. And the Philistine came on and drew near David with his shield bear. The Philistine was near David. What, what does this mean? The Philistine was near David now, which means he had come very close. If you look at verses 1, chapter 17, verses 1 to 3, where he was? He was in the mountain. And we, where was David and the army of Israel? On the other mountain. So in verse 1, this fellow was in on the mountain. Verse 41, he's come down the mountain and he has come down very close to the mountain of Israel. Which means his conquering place. He is very close to the army of Israel now, which means he was on that mountain. I hope so all of you are understanding what I'm trying to say. He is not standing on that same mountain where he was standing on verse 1. Now he is close to the army of Israel, which means he just he has reached very close. Very important principle. Huh? When we neglect problems. When we neglect problems, they keep growing. When you neglect problems, you keep grow it keeps growing. I often tell people, you know, when you are not feeling well, please do a checkup. No, I don't want to do a checkup. You know, I don't know what, what will come in that. I'm afraid. As if, you know, they don't do a checkup, the problem will go. No, it will become more worst. A problem denied, ignored not confronted, will keep growing. Goliath has come now more closer. More closer. It's just a matter of time. It was just a matter of time when he would have conquered the armies of Israel. He would have taken that mountain also. So from the mountain now, he's come down to, from the mountain he came down. Remember there was a valley. That's what we read in verses 1 to 3. From the mountain he's come to the valley. From the valley now he's come close to the mountain where David is. He's almost close. He's in the valley, but he's almost close to the mountain. He's inching forward. A problem which is ignored. That's why, please, don't ignore your problems. Deal with them. They just keep growing when you ignore them. Deal with them. So let's look at, as we end, the conquest. How David conquers Goliath. We know the whole story. Uh, when Goliath sees David, he feels like, you know, and David, first of all, he sees a small boy is coming to fight him. It puts him off. It puts him off to such an extent that he is now ridiculing David. David has already faced the ridicule from Eliab and Saul. Now the challenge is also ridiculing him. Goliath also says, you know, have you come to fight a dog? Am I a dog? And then he sees David has come to fight with a sling and a stone. Now, of course, remember the last lesson when I was giving on David, the kind of heart David had, I gave you the mystery of the five stones. If you all remember, David took five stones. What does the five stones represent? Five, the number five. For the five books. people during David's time, it represented the first five books in the Bible. The Torah, that book of the law, which God told Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Joshua chapter 1, verse 7 to 8. This book of the law shall not depart on from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night and be careful to do it. So five stones represented the word of God. So the lesson is the enemies of God are conquered by the word of God. That's what David, uh, Jesus also showed. In the temp temptation, man shall not live on bread, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. So I'm not getting into that mystery, the five stones, because I've already uh, answered it in my previous session. But I want to end up showing you four things that David used that are coming actually to David's help. These four things never came 
at the spot when David was fighting Goliath. These four things were developed before Goliath could come. When, where they were developed? In the daily life. Routine life. Family responsibilities, work responsibilities. Let's look at as we end the fourth thing. Four things. Up till now, if we have read the whole story of Goliath, the first thing we notice is that David used was his faith in the Lord. We have already seen that in the previous verse. Where Saul, David is telling Saul how God had helped him to conquer. How God had helped him to conquer the lion and the bear that he faced daily in his life. David's faith life was very practical. He brought that life of faith to his daily life. Daily life. As if David will often ask God the daily challenges I face at, in my family responsibilities, in my work responsibilities, he sought the help of God to conquer those challenges. And that's how faith is developed. Daily life. Faith is manifested. Faith is not developed when Goliath comes. The developed faith is manifested when Goliath comes. Saul kept on failing in his daily life. No wonder when the challenge came, that faith level was not there. The level of faith that was required to face that challenge, that level of faith wasn't there. I often have a saying, it says, we all have the gift of faith. That is not the problem. We all have faith. That gift of faith was given to us at baptism. The problem is, all of us don't have strong faith. And it's that strong faith that will help us to face the challenge. Let me give you a word. Champions, people who are champions, develop their faith. Develop their faith or take care of their faith before the problem comes. People who are champions of God develop their faith and take care of their faith before the problem comes, which means they are true in their prayer life, the word of God, bringing God in their daily life, daily challenges. That's where faith is developed and they are taking care of their faith in their daily life. What happens when they are taking care of the faith in their daily life? Faith will take care of them. If you take care of your faith before the problem comes, your faith will take care of you when the problem comes. I repeat again. If you take care of your faith before the problem comes, which means you are really doing things. Many of us, we start looking for faith when the problem comes. Then we think about faith and coming close to God. Before the problem, when everything is going well, we don't think about it. We don't think about spirituality. We don't think about a relationship with God. As a result, when the challenge comes, it shatters us. We, like, we are like the Saul's gang. So if you take care of your faith before the problem comes, your faith will take care of you when the problem comes. So faith was the first thing David used to conquer Goliath. Second, now all of us think, you know, David just had faith in God and he conquered. Hello? No. There were other virtues he had. Virtues. What are virtues? Character qualities that are formed in you. And so one of the virtues David showed, as we saw in the previous, uh, previous section, the, the virtue of courage. The church calls it the virtue of fortitude. Fortitude means courage to face problems, courage to fight problems, courage to face challenges, courage to fight challenges. Now, where was this fortitude developed? The fortitude was manifested when Goliath came. It was manifested. But it was developed in David's daily life when he was facing the lion and the bear. David learned courage in his daily life. The daily problems he faced, David kept on saying, David, face it, conquer it, don't give up. David, face it, conquer it, don't give up. And so he had the virtue of fortitude, which Saul lacked, which the people of Israel lacked. They had all the talent. Talent means what? Armor. 
all the armor best armor they had but they never had the virtue to fight the problem that's what i say you know developing your character is very important i often tell working people your talent will give you the job but your virtues will take you up in the job what's the point of your talent when you don't have courage only to face the problem what's the what's the point you are very talented but you don't have the quality of virtue you can't face problem only and so david had faith in god he had also developed his fortitude the third thing david had what i called the virtue you know there are four cardinal virtues if you have uh, heard the teaching on virtues theological virtues faith hope and love cardinal virtues okay prudence justice fortitude and temperance so now here david is manifesting out of four is manifesting fortitude and now is manifesting prudence wisdom how do we know that david decides which is the best place to fight goliath he decides he knows the valley he is on the mountain goliath is in the valley remember he's come close david doesn't go in the valley david is on the mountain now when you are on top and when you sling you know when you are putting a stone and when the stone comes from top down it comes with a solid speed david knows if goliath starts climbing up then that will be an issue he he hits goliath when goliath is in the valley his prudence david's prudence david's wisdom tells him not only to fight goliath whom to fight but he chooses which is the best place to fight him prudence wisdom wisdom is a gift from god that is developed when we allow god to help us to solve our daily little problems the daily little problems that you face with your kids with your spouse with the issues in the workplace every challenge that you are facing in your family and workplace is a opportunity for you to grow in the two virtues fortitude come on face it and prudence be wise and so he had faith that's the instruments david is using he had fortitude he had prudence where to fight last the skill david had the skill to fight goliath skill what do i mean by skill saul was giving his armor to david but david had never practiced sword fighting what david had fight if practice was when he was taking care of his father's sheep perhaps one of the practice david kept on doing was the sling please don't think that the sling he took right now right now is taking and one shot he gave that one shot and to be correct at that one shot how many practices david must have had that is exactly the stone goes and hits goliath now david was not practicing hitting goliath because he never knew in future he will face goliath what david was doing was perhaps he kept some pot on a far off place and he took the sling and from far off place will hit will aim and many a times initially when you start practicing you know you may miss you may keep missing you may keep missing you may keep missing but then as you keep doing correct practice not only practice but correct practice you start hitting so first you hit the pot then you make a mark on the pot because remember david hits right in the temple of goliath's head you know there right there he hits which means his aim was so correct he must have aimed for the head he must have aimed for that and then first david hits the pot and then david must have made a mark on the pot and he says let me hit the mark the stone must have got sideways up way down way and then one day david hits the mark and he keeps hitting the mark practicing the skill practicing it again and again i often say god gives us charism charism is like a knife skill is the sharpness on the knife 
and this skill that david kept on practicing is coming to his help now i have often found and i like to end up with this today i find god all these four qualities he has helped me with facing the problems in my life faith prudence fortitude but i also have a skill that i practice i call it a skill of problem solving maybe one day i will do a session on problem solving skill what are the first three things you must do when you have a problem it doesn't mean your problem gets solved but at least you are getting inch closer and closer in solving your problem three things in problem solving three skills of problem solving i thank god i learned this quite early when i was in the renewal someone taught me this in fact my when i was going for counseling for depression as i said it the priest who was counseling me he taught me two things how to handle my emotions and how to deal with problems in life and i had learned this almost 30 years back three things you do when you have a problem skills are you learning skills do you know what are the first two three things to do when you have a problem have you taken trouble to learn that no we don't do that we feel on the faith god will do everything god will do his part but in problems like goliath there is god's part and there is my part i have to confront i have to fight i have to show fortitude i have to show prudence i have to show faith my part many of us we don't want to do our part we want god to do everything and so david used the skill so as we conclude david conquers goliath by his faith in the lord by the prudence by the virtue of prudence and fortitude and the skill of the sling those who were the instruments those who were the four instruments the champion used fighting goliath what is the goliath you are facing today in your life and as i said the goliath is taking pretty long it's taking pretty long not just going away are you like saul and his army getting discouraged getting dismayed giving into fear today is an opportunity for you courageous people are people who go ahead and fight in spite of the fear discouragement and the low feelings they go through do you have the faith the prudence the fortitude all these three virtues are developed the theological virtue of faith the cardinal virtue prudence and fortitude are developed in your daily life what are the skills you must learn to deal take for example you have problem with your kids what are the skills you have to learn the problems at your workplace you require skills to solve them and skills can be learned what are the skills today you need to learn to be a good parent to be a good spouse so that you deal with those problems that are happening there may god lead us to be champions like david let's bow our heads and pray lord we praise you and thank you for this morning we praise you and thank you for this such an encouraging story of david and goliath really lord is such motivating really motivating lord to see this whole story lord motivating us and often times we lord we just think that you know it's david's faith in god just helped him to conquer yes it was his faith in god but along with the faith were so many other things that david had allowed god to develop him in his daily life i just want to make a simple prayer lord that all that we have learned about this story that we will take time to reflect on it especially the qualities of a champion that we will work on developing those qualities we will not so get this easily discouraged by the ridicule and challenges we face the goliaths and the ridicule that comes from our family and workplace sometimes we will not give in to that give us the wisdom not to fight our critics but to keep on focusing on the goal what we are doing and to keep on doing it 
Lord, the best answer to a critic is our work, the work that we do. And we do it well. We do it superbly, Lord. That's the best answer. Every sportsman knows, Lord, when the nation criticizes him for the lack of performance, the best answer is score. May we never focus on the critics and their words, but may we always focus on the goal that you give us in our life. Lastly, we pray, Lord, may we be people of faith. May we be people of prudence and fortitude. And above all, Lord, give us the humility to learn skills in our life, skills that will help us to solve the day-to-day -day problems of our life. We make this prayer, Father, in the most precious name of Jesus, through the intercession of Mary, our beloved mother, and through the intercession of all the angels and saints. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Victor. Thank you, Brother Victor. God bless you. Thank you, Brother Victor. Thank you, Brother Victor. God bless you. Thank you, Brother Victor. Thank you, Brother Victor. Welcome. How was your mother, Brother Victor? Mom was not keeping well yesterday. She was vomiting. Uh, I think so. She has uh, hyperacidity with all the medication that has gone in. Oh. All that she was eating, she was vomiting almost the whole day. So, oh. yeah. But now the doctor, I spoke to the doctor in the night. He says, this is normal. Okay, so mm -hmm. but she's recovering. She's recovering. Yesterday she was able to get up and walk slowly. She went to the washroom. So the slow movement has started. She it will take a little time for her to recover. How old is she, brother? How old is she? I pray for her. 74. 74 only. Oh. Thank you, brother. Brother, the recording is still on. Yeah, yeah. Put